What's up guys? It's Marissa with Barely Keeping It Together and today I'm going to be sharing with you five trends in home design and home decor that we're just going to keep seeing getting bigger and more popular and then three trends that we're going to see start to go away a little bit more. So let's get into the video. I'm Marissa. I'm a borderline crazy dog mom, entrepreneur, interior design obsessed, pop culture enthusiast. I'm here to bring you all things interiors, life hacks, personal development, organization, and manifestation. I'm the kind of woman who doesn't have the patience to get through this recording. So let's get into it. This is Barely Keeping It Together. Now, before I get into my video today, if you guys enjoy this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up because it does so much to help growing creators like myself here on YouTube. All right, so the first trend that I want to talk about that is getting bigger and bigger and you're going to see a lot more of is a home design aesthetic called Japandi. Now, what is Japandi? It is a combination of Japanese Zen and Scandinavian design together. So it is going to be a lot of bleached woods like you see in Scandinavian decor. Some of the factors of Huga, which is, by the way, if you guys are interested in how to live a more Huga life, I do have a video I can link above all about that. But you're going to see candles and fireplaces, but you're also going to see Japanese Zen. So you're going to see lots of low furniture from the Japanese Zen. You're also going to see spaces that are grounded with the color black. I love using the color black in design, so I love that. And then everything is going to be very simple things, the pieces that you're going to use are also going to be not only aesthetic, but functional. So if it's not multi-purpose, it at least has a use in the space, right? So you might have a poof or a cushion next to a coffee table that could also be used as a place to sit, which is going to be a nod to that Japanese Zen aesthetic. Now with the Scandinavian design, again, I did mention that there are bleached woods, there's going to be lighter colors, like think of like a heathered gray. Also part of that Scandinavian design is going to be trying to create as much light in the space as possible. Now part of the reason why Scandinavian design incorporates as much light as possible is because the Scandinavian countries are some of the coldest places in the world and they don't get that much natural light. So having lots of windows, keeping the wall color light and just trying to get as much natural light as possible is huge in Scandinavian design. So in the Japandi, you are definitely going to see that incorporated in as well. So I will give you guys a couple visual examples of what a Japandi space looks like. The next trend that is going to, that honestly is big now and it's going to continue to stay big is shelfies and having shelf decor. Now here in my office, I do have a shelf where I get to sort of demonstrate how to style and I'd be happy to do videos for that for you guys. If you're interested in shelf design, leave me a comment down below and I would love to make those videos for you. But also open shelving in kitchens is going to continue to be huge in the upcoming years. So not only are we going to see kitchens that have, you know, the open shelving, but how you style that shelving is going to be a big part of the trend. And if you guys want to stay on top of the upcoming trends, here's how you should think about styling your kitchen open shelving. First thing is going to be copper pots or copper cookware is going to get bigger and bigger over the next few years. So if you guys are out and about and you see either vintage or new copper cookware, think about adding that to your shelf decor in your kitchen. Also different colored glass is going to be huge. Now, if you guys follow a beautiful mess and Elsie Larson, she is famous for her gorgeous color glass. She has all the different rainbow glass, but if you guys can incorporate different colors of glass, that's going to continue to be huge in the next upcoming years. Now, a great way to style a shelf is sort of layering all different types of objects, right? So you might have colored glass next to some cookbooks and then have a vintage pot, which brings me to my next point, which is that you want to layer the old with the new in your shelfies and your shelf decor. So definitely do not hesitate from thrift shopping, Facebook marketplace shopping, antique shopping, because old and new is going to continue to be 
big. Also within this trend is clay pots, ceramic pots, handmade pots, vessels, antique vessels, all of those types of pieces are continuing to be incredibly popular in the upcoming years. So again, if you are at home goods and you see, you know, handmade clay pots, or if you're vintage shopping or on Facebook marketplace and you see those, definitely pick those up for your shelf decor because layering those in with the new pieces is going to continue to be huge in shelf decor in the next few years. Another thing I want to say is I cannot, you know, emphasize this enough. A lot of my friends who have homes and including myself, I've been able to get pieces that our older parents are no longer using. And getting those antique and family heirloom pieces just adds to the aesthetic, it adds to the story. So when you're thinking about your modern open shelving, think about layering in family history, old, new, all of those sorts of things, and you will continue to be on trend as well as building a story for your home when you're inviting people into your kitchen. So the next thing I wanna talk about that is going to continue to be on trend is sort of on that same path of the old and the new. And what that is, is upcycling existing furniture. I talk about that a ton on this channel because one, I love refinishing furniture. Two, I love DIY. Three, I love getting good deals on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, all the things. But that being said, you can also upcycle family heirlooms, you can upcycle pieces that you already own. So giving something that already exists new life is gonna continue to be huge in trends. Now, one reason for this is the younger generation, those kids that are, what are they? Gen Z? Gen X? No, Gen Z. Oh Lord, you know I don't know. Let me have a sip of my tea. I think it's Gen Z. Now, one of the things that is great about Gen Z is they are so eco-friendly, they're worried about the earth and they care about the earth. And part of that is upcycling things. If you can give something new life that already exists at a thrift shop or in your family, it is so much more eco-friendly than going and buying a mass produced piece of furniture. So I highly recommend continuing to upcycle things and give it new life and new purpose within your space. If you guys have questions about it, leave me a comment down below. I love talking about upcycling. And if you guys watched the video where I revealed my new YouTube studio, I did upcycle an existing cane chair that I bought off of Facebook Marketplace and I'm in love with the way it came out. So definitely go check that out. I will link that above as well. Okay, the next trend that I wanna talk about is sort of along the lines of the Japan Bee aesthetic is we are actually, beside the, this is like, controversial to the colored glass comment I made, but we're gonna see a lot more just neutral color palettes, not a ton of pops of color. So you're gonna see blacks, whites, tans, you know, muted blues, natural colors. So that could be browns, it could even be peaches, you know, think clay, that kind of thing. But we're just going to continue to see a lot of natural color palette. I like to think that this is sort of a function of us being home more. It's just super practical to have easy, simple color palettes as we're all in our house a lot more. Like, look at me, I match the room I'm in because like, these colors are just how I exist. I don't know, it is what it is. And that's also part of that Japandi aesthetic is having a neutral color palette and not tons of pops of color. Now, along that lines, also tied to the Japandi that we're gonna to continue to see, even if you're not interested in Scandinavian and even if you're not interested in Japanese Zen, you are going to continue to see that minimalism is going to be huge. Now, the reason for this is we are all home a lot more and being surrounded by our clutter is hard to be around. So just having as little as possible. I also think that this is a function of the economies be affected by COVID and people just learning to live with less and having less around them. So we're going to continue to see a little bit more of a minimalist aesthetic in home decor. So just getting rid of that clutter, clearing off the surfaces, just having nice, wide open, clean surfaces in minimalism. So those are the trends that we are going to continue to see 
grow in the next year, in the next few years. So if you guys are decorating your home now, keep them in mind. Just to give you a quick reminder of what those were, we have Japandi, we have open shelving and all the things I added to that sort of sub category. Then we also have minimalism, we have upcycling, and we have natural color palettes. Now let's get into the three trends that I know we're going to see start to go away a little bit more. So if you are decorating or designing or buying things for your new home and you want to stay a little more on trend, these are three trends to stick away from because we're going to see them start to go away a little more. The first trend that we're starting to see styles sort of leaning away from, and by the way, everything I'm going to talk about has a caveat. So I'll get into that. But the first trend that we're starting to see spaces get away from is mid-century modern. So it used to be in the last couple of years that if anybody was buying new furniture at West Elm, at CB2, at Crate and Barrel, there was a huge mid-century modern nod no matter what. So you had those angled legs, you had that mid-tone wood, all those things, and everybody was buying mid-century modern furniture. Well... Now it's not so cool to have those mid-tones, those angled legs, that sort of thing. But if you have a mid-century home or if you have a home that has a nod to mid-century, it's still cool to decorate it mid-century. Think Palm Springs. That is like literally all these gorgeous mid-century modern homes. They should continue to be designed mid-century modern. But that doesn't mean that new construction in every house should have mid-century modern. It means that just mid-century and the houses that have non to mid-century will continue in that design aesthetic. So if you have a new construction home or a 90s home that you're trying to add a little bit more character to and you want to stay on trend, purchasing mid-century modern furniture is not the sort of new look to go for and you're going to see popular culture lean away from mid-century modern design unless you have a mid-century home. Along that same lines, don't hate me. I don't want to be hated. I don't want to be controversial. Now, this is going to be, again, there's a caveat here, but we're going to start to see the trend lean away from modern farmhouse. In the last year, two years, it has been, if you are buying a new construction home, that you're going to design it on the interior and the exterior as a modern farmhouse. Now, let me give you the caveat here. First of all, the first caveat is if you're in a Southern state. So for example, there's a lot of new construction in Texas and in Nashville, Tennessee area that's still going to lean towards modern farmhouse. Now, because geographically that sort of fits that Southern aesthetic more, you're going to still see that continue to be popular for the next few years. So if you live down south and you want to continue to be on trend, go ahead with your modern farmhouse. But if you really want to be ahead of the trends, move on to something else because the rest of the country is moving on. Sorry. By the way, we're done with Ray Dunn. I don't know that Ray Dunn was ever here. I don't know that word art was ever cool, but if you were on that trend, bye. We're over it. Sorry, don't be mad at me. All right. And then also the other thing I will add in here is if you're building new construction and if you're building modern farmhouse and you want to be sort of on the trendier side of that, what I would suggest is do a black modern farmhouse. It will insert an image so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. This is a lot more fresh and contemporary way of doing modern farmhouse rather than doing the white with the black exterior. Now, of course, there's going to be areas and reasons that people will always incorporate modern farmhouse and that is fine. But if you are looking to do the new trends and you want to know what's going to be cool in the next couple of years, you're going to want to lean away from modern farmhouse. Now, the next trend that I want to talk about that is going away, which has actually been here for sort of quite a while. I want to say the last five, 10 years, it has been incredibly popular to have open concept floor plans. So you have that kitchen that's open to the living room, which is open to the dining room, and it's all one big space and everyone to be together. Well, over the pandemic, we realized that that was not as convenient if the entire family is home, working from home, Zooming from home, schooling from home, homing from home. We are home a lot more. And that has made the trend of having more closed off floor plans to be sort of the future that we are leaning towards. So over the next five to 10 years, I anticipate that we will continue to see floor plans with a little bit more of segmented rooms 
to be a lot more popular than that open floor plan. And it's kind of funny because in 10 years, open floor plan homes might seem super dated and out of trend. So we'll see how that sort of evolves over the next few years. But again, people want to be able to have home offices. They want to be able to divide up the space. And the amount of people looking for ways to divide up open concept home over the last year is just growing and growing. And people really want to be able to have their own private space within a home and not just feel like everything is one big room and nobody can get alone time because we're all home all the time. So definitely we're going to see the trend lean away from the open concept floor plan, which has been so popular over the last few years. So the next thing that I wanted to mention is if you guys have enjoyed getting my design opinion about what the existing trends are, what's going to be trendy, what's going to be less trendy in the future, I have actually just recently launched my own e-design and design consulting services. So if you are looking to work with somebody on your own space, go check it out. I have it linked in the description below. I would love to talk to you about your space and we can schedule a time to talk you and I. Otherwise, I will continue to make videos here on YouTube all about this kind of stuff as well as the other things that I like to cover such as mindset, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Now I will be doing a series of videos all about different design aesthetics, how you can get that look, items to look for, how to make it accessible within your home, paint colors, all that sort of thing. So if there's a specific design aesthetic you're interested in, please leave me a comment down below and let me know. I know we could talk about mid-century modern, even though I'm sorry that I just said it's out, but like for a mid-century home, it's still in. So we could talk about that. We could talk about Bohemian. We could talk about glam. We can talk about Japandi. We can talk about industrial, beachy. What is it that you guys want to know how to implement into your own home? Leave me a comment down below and I would love to make those videos for you. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will talk with you guys later. Bye.